Hi everyone, welcome to the first part of the video where we are discussing how we can bypass the Cloudflare protection for particular website with the help of the ChatGPT's method. Right. So in this one, we are going to discuss the very first method, which is historical DNS record method. Okay. Before moving forward, here is a quick announcement. This video is only for educational purpose. Don't misuse this knowledge. If you are going to misuse this knowledge, then I'll be not responsible for your actions. Okay, so let's move to the method one, which is historical DNS record method. So some of you might say that what is the bypassing has to do with the historical DNS record because bypassing is a completely different technique and why we are uh, going through the historical DNS record. The reason for this one is most of the time what happens is if you are have a server where the website is hosted and you want to add a Cloudflare protection, then people don't change their original server. They just keep the original server at, as it is and they just add Cloudflare's name server and they route their traffic through the Cloudflare to the uh, user's browser, right? So in this case, the original server is not getting changed. So it might be possible that that original server is being used uh, like one or two year without Cloudflare protection and suddenly so owner decides to continue with the Cloudflare and without changing the original IP address of the server or without changing the original server or its IP, right? So in this case, in past two years when website was using directly original IP of the server, that IP might get logged in some places where the historical DNS records are getting stored. So, so in this case, even if the owner is using the new uh, Cloudflare protection but he is using the original server that was uh, used before the old server that was used before so we can get the current IP of this server by checking the historical DNS records so that's why we check historical DNS record so another reason is if owner is using the cloud provider which is not global it's kind of local or let's say local cloud pro cloud provider or something they have limited IP accesses they have limited IP ranges so no matter how many times he's going to create the virtual machine or virtual server it is he is going to get the IP address from that particular range only so it becomes very easy to us to predict the original IP of the website now to check historical DNS record, I've been using some websites from decades. So I will share those websites with you and I will tell you how to use this website to identify records and uh, how can you use that particular information. So let's move forward and let's hop into the first website. So our first website is securitytales.com. So this is basically a cyber security company who offers the turn off services but they offer one free database to check historical DNS records. So what we are going to do, we are going to use that particular session of the website. So let's search our domain name here. So as you can see in the results, there are six boxes and five of them are useless for us as of now because they are not revealing any information. But if you check the last box, the sixth box, which is the TXT record of the SPF. Okay, so it's a basically SPF record. So what is the SPF record? Suppose website is using their own email service, then they have to add the SPF record in the TXT format in the DNS, right? So this record can lead to leak the IP address. So as you can see, it is leaking the IP address here and I can confirm that that's the exact IP address where the original website is hosted. Now we just found the original IP address of the website. Now let's move to the next session. Okay, so once we go to the historical DNS record page, as you can see, we have a few sessions here. So one is a name record, second is triple A record, then MX record, NS record, SOA record and TXT record. Okay. So all of these records are important here. So if you check the a name record, as you can see, it is giving the IP address at what time it is changed, who was the cloud provider and how for how long the IP address was used. So as I explained the story before, not changing the original server, but adding the Cloudflare protection in that case this information is very very helpful so as you can see for this particular domain the owner was using DigitalOcean server then it shifted to the cloudflare that means it is highly possible that donor owner hasn't changed the original ip of the server and which is listed right here so we can just grab that ip address and we we can test that particular ip address using the tools like nmap and other scanning tools and we can check if the website is still hosted on that particular ip address or not 
in next session we are checking the mx record so in the mx record it is listed that which mail services this owner has been using okay so now uh, there are some uh, company names are also listed here so here uh, the first name is DigitalOcean. That means it's a self-hosted email service. Uh, then second name is DigitalOcean again. The third name is Zoho Corporation. So Zoho is a basically Indian-based company who offers the uh, email services. So this is a third-party service. But in first cases, first two cases, that was the self-hosted email service on the DigitalOcean because DigitalOcean allow port 25 access. Now you can just get IP address for that particular subdomain or let's say the mail domain and you can have the IP address right now if they are not using the protection or if the uh, subdomain is misconfigured. Similarly, you can check NS and SOA records also. But what is interesting here is TXT record because TXT record leaks most of the data. So if you are hosting the email service or any other service, it's most likely that people will publish the original IP address in the, their TXT records. And from there, we can grab the IP addresses and we can try to access those IP addresses or we can try to banner grabbing those IP addresses. And we can check if the same website is hosted on that particular IP address or not. So by this way, you can use this information. You can basically try to find the original IP address of the website. Okay, so that's all about the first website. Let's move to the second website. There is one section called subdomains, but that's not important for now. We will cover that uh, subdomain session in the part two of the video, right? So let's move to the next website. So our next website is completedns.com. This is also historical DNS record storing database. It's kind of oral database. It's not stored in the detail. So this will just give you few information. So as you can see on the screen, it is just giving me the name servers information, but this is valid too. This information is also helpful too in our research part. So you might be thinking that we have one website, then why we are exploring another website again, which gives the exact same results. Uh, the reason for this one is it is not possible that always one domain will exist in the all uh, let's say all databases. It might be possible that your domain exists in the first database but not in the second database it might be possible that your domain exists in the uh, second database not in the first database so in that case these all websites are helpful so that's why it's always good to have the multiple website where we can check the history of the dns the next website is quizrequest.com so this is also the same website as the previous website here also you can get similar dns information but the interesting thing about this website is it provides a history of the name servers from the past 20 years. That's awesome. Our next stop is viewdns.info. This is a very, very powerful website who has a very powerful tools. Each tool is divided into very sub tools. You need to find the exact tool which you need. So we need a historical DNS records, but here is the one tool which says the historical IP records, but it supports domains too. So we are going to enter our domain name right here. So as you can see, we have the complete list of the IP address along with the cloud provider's name and date here so that we can track that how the hosting was changed for that particular website. And then we can see how the IP address was getting changed and we can just grab on some IP address and we can try to find the IP address. And if the hosting provider is not popular, the, if the hosting provider is kind of local provider, then you can just grab that IP address. You can just scan that full range for banner grabbing to see if the website exists on any particular IP address or not. But this method will be not helpful in the case of AWS, Linode and DigitalOcean because they got multiple ranges of the IP address. So the probability of the getting the same IP address or similar IP address in the same range is quite low. So our next stop is dnsanalytics.com. So this website is also very helpful. It is not only for historical DNS record, but it gives you additional information also. So as you can see, it is also giving this information that we saw in the very first website. If your domain doesn't exist on the first website, then you can come here and you can search on this particular website because this website has a very big database as compared to other websites. So. So the probability of the getting results that we required is quite high here. So I think I have covered all points that I thought for this video. And if you have any better approach or if you have any better website, just do let me know in the comments. 
So here is a quick announcement guys I have started my new YouTube channel where I'll be posting videos about the AI and new technologies that are coming in the market along with that I am going to explain what are the opportunities that are coming with that particular technology and how you can use that particular technology to simplify your own work so if you are interested in new technology update then please consider subscribing my channel you will find link in the description that's all thanks for watching see you in the next